questions as I move along with the presentation. Uh, great. So uh, today, uh, the plan of presentation, presentation shall be, we shall first discuss the epidemiology, then uh, we shall talk about some case definitions, then natural history of disease uh, tuberculosis in pediatrics, and then what are the investigative tools available to us, how do we use them, diagnostic algorithm, uh, the way we approach uh, a patient, uh, what investigations we get done, and, and what series do we get done. And just three or four slides on organ specific presentation because I do not have much time. It's just an hour. So just three or four slides on this. Then management guidelines and a single slide on adverse events, which are important for you. So the global burden of tuberculosis, this is 2019 uh, 20 data. So it remains one of the top common causes of death. And uh, South Southeast Asia accounts for around 44% of tuberculosis cases worldwide, with India accounting for around 27% of the global burden. And uh, the estimated incidence of tuberculosis in India in 2018 was around 27 lakh cases with the incidence of around 2 lakh per population. And out of those 27 lakhs, we were able to detect around 21.5 lakh cases. And what has happened is over last year, we also planned to improve this from 21.5 to around 24 lakhs. But last year, what happened due to COVID, a lot of our services were shut down. So this figure has gone down further and uh, the situation has worsened. And the vast majority of cases were diagnosed in the age group ranging from 15 to 69 years. We'll discuss this why pediatric tuberculosis is a problem. And children account for around 6% of cases of tuberculosis in India. Another big problem which has emerged is multi drug resistant tuberculosis, MDR, XDR, pre XDR. So, all these things you'll have to read through. And uh, this is becoming a problem. We have a few new drugs like bidaculin, delaminate added to our armamentarium. And bidaculin is especially doing wonders in management of MDR TB. Earlier, we were getting results to tune of around 30-35% recovery. <laughs> now that has increased to around 80% with the addition of uh, bidaculin in the drug regimen. Uh, we can give this drug over the age of six years. Delaminate is another drug which is entering the regimen but is still not available in India. Maybe in another six months to one year, it will be available. Then it shall enter the drug resistant TB regimen. So you should know just a few lines about delaminate and bidaculin. Uh, not too much because ultimately again you'll get a multiple choice question. You can get an MCP on this, these two drugs. So uh, in 2018 the estimated incidence of MDR uh, reforms in resistant TB was 1,30,000 cases in India accounting for approximately 5% of total cases. The estimated burden of MDR TB amongst children worldwide is approximately 3.2%. So Pediatric population is having MDR TB, and most of it is acquired from their uh, parents or grandparents. That is the context of tuberculosis. So now, uh, what is the plan? I'll just a few slides on the uh, tuber the plan. That is the program. So national strategic plan NSP for tuberculosis elimination 2017 to 2025. The goal is to achieve a rapid decline in the burden of tuberculosis, morbidity, and mortality while working towards elimination of TB in India by 2025. So this can come as a MCQ. Uh, when do we want to eliminate TB by in India? 2025. So the plan is detect, treat, prevent and build. So uh, what we want is that you want to detect, detect all tuberculosis, get a microbiological confirmation for the case. That is UDST, Universal Drug Sensitivity Testing. So we want that all our patients should get a sputum smear or maybe a CBNAT. We'll discuss about CBNAT in future slides. And then we are able to classify our patients into drug sensitive TB and drug resistant TB and put on regimens accordingly. So that is detect. Treat is to initiate and sustain all patients on appropriate TB uh, treatment but whenever they seek care with patient friendly systems and social support. So we have multiple uh, treatment centers across the country. The aim is to provide uh, treatment as near to the residence of the patient as possible. So he does not have to run for kilometers to get his drugs. Prevent, yes, to prevent the emergence of TB in susceptible population and prevent drug resistant TB. And build is to build and strengthen enabling policies, empowering institutions and human resources with enhanced capabilities. So uh, this is what we want. We want the capabilities to be enhanced and uh, so that uh, we are able to uh, further our aims and objective of this program.
also not know why the slides are moving slow on this just a moment so uh, another problem is that we miss children with tuberculosis uh, why do we miss them so there are multiple problems because uh, they are often under diagnosed and under reported as we do not have a uh, simple sensitive point of care test such as sputum smear in adults so uh, in adults what do we do we do a sputum smear whereas in children because the disease is possi bacillary that is the number of bacilli in the sputum are so less that they are usually not picked up number 2 children do not produce sufficient amount of sputum uh, for uh, investigations and therefore uh, we are not able to diagnose get a proper microbiological diagnosis in children other than that uh, most of the program is organized with adult cases in mind and uh, the investigations are also planned accordingly other than that then there is a difference in the disease and its diagnosis amongst adults and children so uh, in adults what do we do is we go from bacteriology to radiology that is uh, what we try what i'm trying to say is that uh, you get a smear done and the smear comes positive you get x rays done in pediatric algorithm i'll discuss later on in the end of the presentation Uh, that we get a X-ray done and a Montoux done, and accordingly, we uh, if we get findings, we go in for bacteriology because radiological features are more common as compared to sputum positivity in children. So now uh, some case definitions. You should know these case definitions. So when do we live? When do we investigate for tuberculosis in a pediatric patient? So that will be presumptive pediatric TB. So this refers to children with persistent fever and cough for more than two weeks. now what do you mean by persistent fever uh, you say, uh, whenever you come to the you sit in the opd you will find bachche ko bukhar hai ha ji hai kab se ji inko 2 mahine se bukhar hai and then what does it mean does he have tb 2 mahine se bukhar and the child is not that sick he is playing around running around and seems to be all right so when you break up the history you find that the fever was there around 2 months ago then he was a febrile for 10 days then another episode of fever for 5 7 days With some cough, then the fever went away. Then another episode. Now for four or five days, and the patient has turned up to your OPD. So that is not persistent fever. So we want a fever that is there for at least fourteen days, and then again cough for more than two weeks. So similar story with the cough. Any child uh, because of allergies and pollution in a city like Delhi, cough is there throughout the year. So you talk to him, uh, talk to the family, break up the history of cough. Look at the pattern of cough. Is it Going up, going down. Does he have a lot of wheezing because is it wheezing associated cough, or is it a cough which has suddenly appeared for last two to three weeks? Okay, so we have to differentiate between cough, then loss of weight or no weight gain. Uh, we'll quantify what is uh, loss of weight or no weight gain, and history of contact with infectious TB cases. So these are the three or four points which we look at. So history of unexplained weight loss or no weight gain in past three months. Uh, this is uh the weight loss is defined as the loss of weight of more than 5% of body weight as compared to the highest weight recorded in last three months so loss of weight is 5% of body weight another multiple choice question for you loss of weight in tuberculosis is defined as more than 2% 5% 10% 15% 15%. then you can have months also over last three months so in a symptomatic child contact with a person with any form of active tb within last two years may be significant so history of contact means that the contact should be there in at least last 2 years if he has contacts at 10 years ago or 5 years ago it is not significant so we are interested in contact with a patient who is taking treatment for tuberculosis or is suffering for from tuberculosis in last 2 years in presumptive extra pulmonary tb so this re refers to presence of organ specific symptoms and signs like swelling of lymph nodes again swelling of lymph nodes pretty common in pediatrics so we'll have a look at the lymph nodes we look for matting we look for multiple conglomeration of the lymph node we look at the skin over the lymph node is it adherent to the lymph node 
we look at discharging sinuses of so discharging sinuses present that is profiloderma we may look for lupus vulgaris around the, that region so uh, these are the various manifestations of lymph node tb pain and swelling in the joints yes if it is painful and uh, swollen and if it is tender and acute it goes towards uh, bacterial uh, uh, involvement and if it is not acute it's long standing maybe you have a abscess in the back a swelling in the back which is cold abscess kind of a picture child is not very sick but there is a swelling there some amount of pain is there maybe you have a psoas abscess or a uh, uh, local localized tuberculous spine and a spine tuberculosis or joint tuberculosis other than that neck stiffness disorientation attracts uh, etc we'll discuss in future slides this goes in favor of tubercular meningitis and constitutional symptoms like significant weight loss persistent fever for more than 2 weeks and night sweats and then there is a term known as presumptive drug resistant tb so first of all presumptive tb presumptive extra pulmonary tb and presumptive drug resistant tb so by presumptive drug resistant tb we mean that the patient the child either who has failed treatment with first line of drug so a child was there he was suspected of having tb maybe he was uh, having microbiologically confirmed tb was started on att and then once the att was started he did not respond or he responded initially later on worsened so that could, that could be drug resistant tb or pediatric tb non responder so started on tb uh, tb treatment but did not respond or the patient uh, the child is diagnosed with tuberculosis but the contact which the child has is a drug resistant tb that is the adult in the family who gave the child tb is suffering from a tuberculosis which is drug resistant maybe rifampicin syndrome resistance or ins resistance or maybe multi drug or xdr whatever other than that tb patients who are found positive on any follow up sputum smear examination during treatment with first line drug so you started att and at the end of 2 months you did a sputum and you found that uh, sputum is positive implies the patient is gone into drug resistance and then again previously treated tb cases after 2 years again they manifest symptoms and uh, uh, they manifest symptoms implies that we will have to investigate them on the line of drug drug resistant tb now uh, after uh, uh, having some case definitions we have to understand that in pediatrics there are two things one is infection and second is disease uh, infection simply means that the child has been exposed to tubercle bacilli the bacilli has entered his body and is lodged somewhere and is lying dormant there and disease is something which means that the child is having signs and symptoms of some kind of a disease process going on in his body so now what are the risk factors for uh, infection in the in the in the child so increased ex, uh, exposure that is living in high tb endemic communities like for example uh, india india is a high tb endemic country and if somebody lives in a slum overcrowded conditions poor sanitary conditions theek hai uh, this means that he is at a high risk of getting infection from tb then children of families living with hiv so hiv patients uh, parents are at a risk of getting tuberculosis and they'll spread it to their children air pollution including environmental tobacco smoke so all the various kinds of pollution will lead to uh, tuberculosis can lead to tuberculosis in children then if you are in contact with a source case which is having a cavitary disease cavitary disease means he will be excreting lot of bacilli in the sputum so high bacillary load coming out from the patient implies there is a high chance of infection then if increased cough very poor cough hygiene delay in treatment of adult cases all these will increase the exposure of the child to tubercle bacilli lack of contact screening so what we say is whenever we get a positive patient we should immediately do a contact screening if you don't do contact screening a lot of these children who are exposed can later on develop full blown tuberculosis <laughs> contact with source case closeness of contact so if the child is sleeping in the same room with the a uh, positive patient or lives one floor above one floor below and duration of contact what is the duration how long does the child stay with the person who is suffering from tb and then for tubercular disease that is will he get an active disease if he is exposed to a adult having tuberculosis this is the meaning of tb disease so young age especially 0 to 2 years i'll discuss in the next slide uh, what happens is uh, there is around 5 to 10% risk of getting tuberculosis active disease from a patient who is suffering from tuberculosis 
so but as the age decreases younger the child higher the risk of having active disease then hiv infection risk of infection and disease is higher and the child is having immune suppression for example malnutrition he's already malnourished the immune systems of the body are bad so he will develop a full blown disease post measles post measles earlier nowadays we don't see measles earlier whenever we saw a case of measles we tried to rule out tuberculosis in that child post measles especially post viral infections you get uh, viral infections of all kinds uh, respiratory infections then post viral tuberculosis infections can flare up diabetes again a immunosuppressive state you can get uh, flared up tuberculosis lack of profile access so whenever you have a contact uh, whenever you have a contact and you screen him and you forget montu positive or uh, some kind of uh, montu positive you want to give him inh prophylaxis if you don't give him inh prophylaxis there is a high chance of developing tuberculosis not bcg vaccinated the child is not vaccinated for bcg means there will be increased risk of disseminated disease with increased severity so now uh, whenever we get a source case so now here is a source case let me see if my pen works so uh, you have a source case a source case uh, uh, when you have a source case you are in uh, there is a child who is in contact with him so this is the child who is in contact with the source case and uh, just a so uh, once uh, so a source case will have contacts out of those contacts 70% contacts will have no infection this is how we will do it and activate it i like it. so 70% will not have will double, will not have any infection that is no infection out of those uh, the, so these 70% will not develop any kind of disease now out of this, uh, the uh, 30 remaining the 30% remaining patients will develop active in, uh, will develop infection so now they have ex been exposed to tuberculosis and the bacilli has entered their body out of these 30% 90% 90 to 95% will develop persistent latent infection and so what will happen is they will have a latent infection they will not have any symptoms and later on in their life they may develop late reactivation disease and the number is variable but 5 to 10% will develop primary disease so this primary disease could be smear positive infections I'm not getting a good color so it can be a smear positive infection it can be a smear negative infection but they can be infectious because uh, i'll discuss smear positivity for having a smear positive you have to have 10 to the power of 4 to 10 to the power of 5 bacilli per ml so only at that level or above that you get smear positive less than that smear does not come positive but the patient can be infected infected or he may develop extra pulmonary disease like livno tb which is non infectious important thing here is uh 5 to 10% lifetime risk is there but if the if the patient is an infant there is a 50% chance more than 50% chance that the child will develop infectious disease so 50% chance the child will develop infectious disease and there is a 25% chance that the child if the age group is 1 to 5 years the child will develop uh, disease so that is the reason we want to give inh prophylaxis to all children below the age of 5 years now in the upcoming plan i do not know if it is entered or be your books or not this is going to be increased to 18 years we have not started still but we plan to give ins prophylaxis till 18 years of age and soon <laughs> this will be till uh, into adulthood what has happened is uh, because we want to go into eradication earlier it was rntcp we wanted to control so we said ki okay till 5 years those are who are in high risk will give ins prophylaxis but now we are saying that because we want to eradicate the disease we will give inh prophylaxis to any contact any and every contact across the spectrum if the patient is if the patient the patient who is is excreting the bacilli that is the patient has to be sputum positive only then he'll be infective or maybe cbnat positive ga cbnat positive only then he'll be infective so all his contacts will be given inh prophylaxis i hope you are getting the point to 
eradicate the disease from the community so this is a practice in the western countries for example uh, what happens in usa is they get uh, all the people coming from uh, endemic countries like indians going to usa to work like my friend is working as a physiotherapist in uh, uh, usa he has to get his igra done igra i'll talk about it it is similar uh, the it is it shows latent tuberculosis and his uh, igra came positive around one year ago and uh, as his igra came positive he had no symptoms so he was given rifapentin and inh uh, so rifapentin uh, he was given 12 doses it was a weekly regime rifapentin we don't have rifapentin in india so they are all given prophylaxis there so this is what we also plan to adopt in this country till now we are doing it for 5 years later we extend to 18 and then higher age groups next slide let me see so now we'll talk about natural history of disease so as i showed you in the early slide primary infection so there are three features common to primary infection uh, uh, these are the patient may have non specific mild symptoms which can go unnoticed a patient may have lung foci which is usually quite small relative to large hilar nodes so we are talking about bones focus so what happens is uh, in the areas of maximum aeration maximum ventilation there will be a small lung foci then you can see uh, may, you may be able to see some vessels the lymphatics going from that foci to the lymph node and the lymph node may be enlarged so large hilar lymph nodes that will be a gons complex so primary foci may resemble pneumonia and can be in any lobe and parenchymal disease in primary tb typically involves areas of greatest ventilation that is middle lobe superior segments of lower lobe anterior segments of upper lobe so these are the regions which can be involved here for you there is an x ray there so this this you can see uh, this is the uh, gons focus again uh, this is the lymph node here right and this is the patch of pneumonia here so this is what you get a uh, gons complex so now primary infection in the lung it can progress and you can have a progressive primary disease or it can be contained contained then what will happen either you uh, give him uh, prophylaxis that is treated or it will heal naturally so there are two situations it is contained you are giving him treatment or you are, it is healing naturally so later on this can lead to reactivation disease so reactivation disease implies uh, this patient can have uh, full blown tuberculosis any time in his life later on especially there are two peaks one is uh, infants other is adolescents and then later on in his life whenever he is immunocompromised or uh, immunity levels are low for example some severe viral infection or diabetes or something else so and the risk is much higher with natural healing as compared to those who are treated so that is the reason we want to treat our patients uh, our contact so that this risk of reactivation decreases so now after discussing the primary disease and gons form complex let us come to diagnostics so what are the diagnostic modalities which we have by which we are up we try and diagnose a case of tuberculosis again as i said earlier the challenges in pediatrics uh, is the disease is possibly ancillary so there is very low sensitivity of sputum smear examination and there is difficulty in getting samples in children as children do not cough and expectorate and then uh, the need of for invasive techniques for uh, obtaining representative samples is there and this facility is not available in rural peripheral areas so a lot of cases we are not able to get microbiological confirmation and uh, and we have to rely upon a lot of clinical sense also so now the first investigation which we get done is a x ray chest and uh, again the findings which we look for in x ray chest which are highly suggestive are highly suggestive what do we have uh, one is lymph hilar or mediastinal lymph nodes very important for us if lymph nodes are there implies this child is going most probably will be a tuberculosis most probably he can be a malignancy but it's a bright chance he'll be tuberculosis chronic fibro cavity we do not get much in children but yes if it is there it supports tuberculosis miliary pattern again these are highly suggestive of tuberculosis so if these three things are there uh especially what we get is uh, hilar or medicinal lymphadenopathy and miliary pattern uh, they are suggestive of tuberculosis so we did a study in which we did cbnat in stool as well as uh, in uh, gastric aspirate 
and all the patients who had higher uh, lymphadenopathy were uh, showed bacilli in our uh, samples so this is a very uh, uh, this is a highly suggestive uh, finding other than so this is what you get miliary shadows you will see these x rays when your x ray classes and uh, this is the again your uh, mediastinal lymphadenopathy here you are able to see right So now we get lots of other patterns of chest radiographs, which may be associated with tuberculosis. These are non-specific. These include consolidations, non-homogeneous opacities or infiltrates, and thin-walled cavities. So here, what we do is we tell the patient that uh, okay, um, uh, we give them a course of antibiotics, look at their symptoms, look for history of contact. If they do not respond, we move towards tuberculosis. I'll discuss that that in the diagnostic slides. Uh, so if these findings do not resolve upon course of antibiotics we will do a tuberculosis work and the main thing is we try and avoid avoid antibiotics uh, which which have anti tubercular action so we want to avoid antibiotics like amikacin in these patients so that the, the anti tubercular action will not later hamper our help hamper our diagnosis of tuberculosis another test is tuberculin skin test um, so montux test we do it by injecting 0.1 ml of the purified protein derivative on the uh, intradermally on the volar aspect of the left upper arm it uh, must raise a wheel of approximately 6 to 10 mm and then the tuberculin recommended for use under rntcp now ntep and by iap is two tuberculin units of ppd rt23 so this is the mt mcq for you the kind of tuberculin used is ppd rt23 in tween 80 and uh, amount used is 2 units so you'll get the question how much do you give 1 unit 2 unit 5 units 10 units so answer is 2 units and quantity injected is 0.1 ml and it is given intradermally on the volar aspect of the left forearm right it is based on delayed hypersensitivity reaction the reaction is to be read uh, within 48 to 72 hours and uh, beyond 72 hours up to 7 days yes if you a lot of patients do not turn up they turn up on fourth or fifth day so we say that okay if there is no swelling and nothing is there you have to repeat the test if it is still positive it is positive and beyond 7 days we ask for repeat of test and the important thing is the induration is measured not uh, we measure the induration not the redness on the forearm and we measure it along the transverse axis of the Uh, long axis of forearm, so we measure it transversely, right? The size of induration has no correlation with infection. So another important point: if a person has a Montux reading of say 10 mm, another child has a reading of 20 mm, third patient has a reading of 30 mm, is it different? It is not different. Larger the Montux does not mean more severe the infection. Montux positive, Montux negative. That is it. Nothing. No. No other significance. Now another problem has occurred is. that the standard bontu which was available till now is now no more available because the stock solution from this from which the bontu was prepared is now exhausted so we do not have any standard bontu available with us whatever you are we are getting in the market is non standardized we are still using it but we plan to shift to ctb that is a cutaneous tb uh, test uh, this is a novel test which has been developed by staten serum institute copenhagen denmark and it is based on recombinant esat6 uh, and cfp10 uh, filtrate protein and uh, so this is this is slightly different the proteins which we are injecting are slightly different and but the procedure of the test is same the rational behind this test is to provide a high specificity test in a field friendly format that is um, everything else is the same the liquid is uh, different uh, the composition of the solution is different and the important thing is that the induration of 5 mm is taken to be positive instead of 10 mm this test is still not available in india we plan to have it by next year because of covid everything is delayed maybe by another year next year we'll have this available in the country so again a mcq for you that there is something known as ctb skin test and uh, the induration of more than 5 mm is considered positive the advantage is there is no cross reactivity with non tuberculin bacilli or previous bcg vaccination then there is another test which is known as uh, igra interferon gamma release assay so this is commercially available by the name of quantiferon gold test and elispot uh, tb 
on the only advantage is that it detects latent tb infection but the disadvantages cannot distinguish between ltbi latent tb infection and disease so this test is again used as a screening test akin to montu so for us its value is similar to montu or maybe ctb it will not differentiate between active infection and disease so advantages are can detect uh, latent tb infection and is not affected by prior bcg vaccination it does not boost responses when measured by subsequent tests single patient visit is required so you simply take a blood sample and you have the report ready within 24 hours whereas in montu first you give the montu and then the patient turns up after 48 to 72 hours for the reading and the disadvantages are it's expensive i think in the private it costs around 2 to 3000 rupees and the blood sample has to be processed within 8 to 30 hours cannot differentiate between infection and disease and limited data on use in children immunocompromised people and people with recent exposure so basically it is a test only for looking for uh, latent infection nothing more than that then we come to microbiological diagnosis in this we have uh, three things one is sputum smear next is uh, who endos rapid diagnostic test you can call them rntcp endos rapid diagnostic test now ntp endos rapid diagnostic test and culture of Uh, tuberculosis, MTB culture, uh, my microbacterium cultures. So, uh, sputum microscopy is not considered a first line investigation in pediatric pulmonary tuberculosis. As I had told you, the problem is that uh, this uh, uh, microscopy will pick up only if you have bacilli load of more than 10 to the four, power of 4 to 10 to the power of 5 per ml. Otherwise, uh, it will not uh, give you a positive result. and then alternative specimens which we use in pediatric population uh, for getting for uh, getting samples for microbiological detection are gastric aspirate uh, this you must have you will see in the board which is done and it's pretty simple you keep the child fasting overnight and uh, then ideally the patient should not be ambulatory but sometimes uh, uh, if it is a opd patient we call him from his home he should not have taken in water or uh, any food then we put in a ng tube and collect around 5 to 10 ml of stomach aspirate and uh, put it in a bottle and send it to for uh, cbnat and uh, uh, afb examination that is gastric aspirate the problem is that it is an invasive procedure because if you put in a ng tube and therefore you require a skilled staff in due sputum this uh, what we do here is we nebulize the patient uh, with uh, salbutamol first after that we nebulize him with 3% saline then we percuss his chest and ask him to cough so because of salbutamol and 3% ns uh, the uh, sputum gets liquefied which is pre- the sputum present in the chest gets liquefied and the patient expectorates it and collects it in a uh, beaker which we send for further investigations advantage is it is less invasive does not require overnight fasting and can be done in ambulatory settings and requires less skilled staff so we do not require a skilled personnel to put in ng tube or do some bronchoalveolar lavage bronchoscopy or anything simply nebulize him with uh, two different solutions ask him to cough percuss his chest he produces sputum give the sample disadvantages that there is a risk of transmission because he'll be coughing around uh, he can expectorate and throw around bacilli in the area and contaminate the whole area and uh, the another advantage is it can only be done in uh, old, older children in bronchial velar lavage lavage it is a specialized procedure and uh, it requires a bronchoscope and uh, very highly skilled trained uh, trained uh, medical staff it can be it is usually not done very commonly because you have to enter the uh, via the trachea into the bronchus into the affected region put in saline then re- then uh, suck, it, suck it out put it in a a uh, container and send it for investigations the advantage of this is that uh, sometimes the patient is not expectorating and uh, or a uh, ga and uh, induced sputum are negative we go inside we have a look at the bronchus look for ulcerations we can see ulcerations if the lymph node is ulcerating into the bronchus like endobronchial tuberculosis we have a direct visual impression and we are for sure we know it is tuberculosis sometimes we can take uh, trans bronchial biopsy also from the lymph nodes present there and we get good results i remember a patient we were not very sure what was happening we started off with att 
he responded initially for 15 days 20 days then he again uh, started having fever all these samples sputum ga everything was negative we got a ball done and we got a trans bronchial uh, needle aspiration of the lymph node and that lymph node turned out to be positive for tuberculosis bacilli and uh, we, so we were sure that it is a case of tuberculosis and we were able to look for resistant resistance pattern and it turned out to be rifampicin resistant also so uh, it is done in very special situations and is not readily available to be done in uh, special settings only now we come to uh, rapid molecular diagnostic tests so expert mtb rif so expert is the name of the brand it is a trademark and uh, generic name is cbnat that is cartridge based nucleic acid amplification test so it is a rapid diagnostic test which has revolutionized the diagnosis of tuberculosis in children so um, this uses real time pcr to detect bacilli and it also detects rifampicin resistance so good thing is that we are able to get rifampicin resistance so uh, what it does is basically uh, it is a genomic test so uh, in this there is a probe which will look for mutating gene so that is rpco rpoc gene if that is there then it will give you rifampicin resistance so 95% of rifampicin resistance is because of that rpco gene mutation a uh, 5% it will miss out on so at least we are getting 95% of resistant cases uh, by this test so result is available within 2 hours and it does not quantify bacillary load although we get reports of uh, uh, in uh, cbnat of uh, high load mid load and uh, uh, we get four levels of it but we usually do not use it for quantifying bacillary load and in uh, policy update in 2013 that is since 2013 who has recommended the use of expert as an initial diagnostic test in children so we are using this test for uh, diagnosis of tuberculosis uh, routinely in our uh, hospital and wards and in fact across the country <clears throat> so this is the equipment basically so sputum is uh, liquefied put in a container the container is put into machine and everything rest everything is done in the machine basically nested real time pcr semi nested real time pcr and you have a report printed out uh, after around 90 minutes and uh, the machine which we have can take in around 16 samples at uh, uh, 16 samples at one point of time so we are able to do a lot of samples in that machine so advantages are real time pcr detects organisms even if few are present so sputum i said 10 to the power of 4 to 10 to the power of 5 here in even if 16 uh, 160 bacilli are present so 160 is the cut off limit for detection by expert mtb rif and it can detect dead bacilli also so what happens is the sample goes bad during transport no problem uh, if the uh, dna is there it will be dna rna is there it will picked up by the uh, mtb expert rif result is there within 2 hours and uh, detects resistance to rifampicin and as i said as i said it uh, it is genomic resistance which it will pick up and it is fully automated so simply put in the sample after 90 minutes you will get a print out of the report it's a closed system decreases the risk of contamination and hence no need for biosafety facilities <clears throat> um we have had a modification uh, which is known as uh, expert mtb ultra so this is the modification which we have uh, the advantage is that uh, this will pick up bacilli at much lower levels even up to 30 bacilli it will pick up this test incorporates two different multi copy amplification targets so whatever it is the important thing for us is that the lower limit for detection of bacilli it shall soon be available in our uh, setup in the chest clinic in um, uh, mansi loknayak and then there is a indian modification which is this trunat uh, this is uh, as we indians are very good at copying we have copied uh, the expert mtb rif made our own machine uh, it is a company known as uh, mol bio in hyderabad which is uh, 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 producing this uh, equipment and the advantage is that it is portable battery operated so you can take this equipment it's a small handy equipment you can take this uh, device into the periphery itself and uh, do the testing and give the report there and there itself so it does not require a continuous electric supply portable and uh, again uh, single sample now the quattro and uh, duo machines are also available so it can do four samples also at uh, one point of time then we come to culture this is the uh, gold standard of course earlier solid uh, media x based media such as uh, lg media was used 
and the reports were available after four weeks. Nowadays, we are using liquid media. So this has increased sensitivity for growth of uh, M tuberculosis and the reports are also available within 10 to 14 days. So this is important. Report is available within 10 to 14 days and the methods include BACTAC 460 and MJIT, Mycobacterium Growth Indicator Tubes. So the program approves uh, MJIT. So in our program, we are using, that is the RNTCP, now NTEP, we are using the MJIT systems. Then the other tests like TB serology for ELISA, it is not to be used, it is banned because uh, it was trying to detect uh, antibodies against antigen 5 lipo arabino manan LAM. It is no more used and it is a useless test. It has been banned by government of India. ESR, we used to say that ESR elevated as shared TB hoga, uh, but uh, ESR can be elevated in many conditions. It has not much of a role. So we, uh, we just have a look at the ESR, but we don't give it uh, much of a role in the nowadays uh, in management or diagnosis of tuberculosis. So after discussing the test, let us come to the algorithm of uh, how do we approach a case of tuberculosis. So as I said earlier, uh, let me see, uh, persistent fever. The pointer. Okay, here's the pointer. So persistent fever, more than two weeks with, without a known cause and unremitting cough for more than two weeks and or weight loss of 5% in three months or no weight gain in past three months or poor weight gain despite nutritional rehabilitation. So this will uh, lead to a suspicion of tuberculosis, right? So this will give you a suspicion of tuberculosis and of course a contact of patient uh, contact with patient uh, contact with patient with pulmonary TB in past two years. So history of contact should be there. What do we do? We get a chest x-ray done. Uh, we get a chest x-ray done and a skin TB that is Montauk's test done. Now chest x-ray is highly suggestive. What does highly suggestive mean? Uh, highly suggestive means that you have either uh, hyalur lymphadenopathy or miliary pattern. So then you take a expectorated sputum, either gastric aspirate, uh, ex either the patient expectorated sputum or we take a gastric aspirate or we get an induced sputum and we, and we send it for WRDT. What is WRDT? WHO approved rapid diagnostic test. So what is that test? It is CBNAT. So we send for CBNAT. And uh, so this is CBNAT. CBNAT positive. CBNAT comes positive. It implies that it is a microbiological confirmed case and we start off ATT. CBNAT comes negative but the skin test is positive and we have a highly suggestive x-ray it implies there is no and we uh, again look at the case no other likely alternative diagnosis we label it as a clinically diagnosed tb case start ATT. third situation is uh, skin test is negative and wrdt is negative so both are negative what do we do we refer this patient to a expert for further investigations because the X-ray picture is either miliary or has lymph nodes. So if he has miliary, we look for DD of miliary. If it has lymph nodes, we look for Hodgkin's or lymphomas or some kind of malignancy, right? So uh, we go in that direction. Now, another situation is, another situation is that uh, there is a X-ray showing non-specific shadows. I had discussed earlier, some consolidation, some infiltrations, or uh, some haze is there. What do we do? We look at the history. We give a course of antibiotics, look for response. So give a course of antibiotics, look for response. Now, even after giving antibiotics, symptoms are persistent and shadows are also there. They are also persisting. We get a GA done or induced sputum and get a CBNAT along with skin test. If uh, CBNAT is positive here, it is TB. We again uh, go for microbiology. It is a microbiologically confirmed case and we start ATT. And if skin test is negative, but the shadows are persisting and WRDT is also negative 
again we ask for workup of a case of as a case of persistent pneumonia so persistent pneumonia causes will be different we look for cystic fibrosis we look for foreign body we look for immunology immunological deficiencies so uh, we go in another direction now another situation is chest x ray is normal skin test is positive so what we do we evaluate for extra pulmonary so montrux positive patient is having those above symptoms but the x ray is normal so most probably it could be a case of extra pulmonary like lymph node tb or amf tuberculosis somewhere else in the body another situation is uh, here when the, everything is normal skin test is normal and x ray is normal we ask for looking for a alternative cause so this is the uh, approach to a patient when we are suspecting tuberculosis so algorithm for pediatric pulmonary tb among children with no risk factors for drug resistance drug resistance i will not discuss today because that is another session if anybody of you is interested message me we have a seminar on wednesday at 2 pm for the next uh, for on that day for around 2 hours we'll be discussing drug resistant tuberculosis today we'll only discuss drug sensitive tuberculosis we call it dst drug sensitive tuberculosis so now drug sensitive sensitivity testing just a few slides on that number one as i said is we have uh, cbnat which will tell you the rifampicin resistance okay so uh, cbnat will help you in is detect detecting resistance to rifampicin what other test do we have for resistance this is lpa line probe assay what is that line probe assay so line probe assay it detects m tuberculosis complex so what we do it we apply it directly on sputum smear positive cyst specimens if we take a gastric aspirate we put a, a gastric aspirate comes positive we have to culture it and only then we can apply lpa so results are obtained in 24 to 48 hours and the uh, mcq for you first line lpa stands for uh, this is the first line lpa and here uh, we do it for isoniazid mainly rifampicin also we can do for but rifampicin we have already got resistance pattern from cbnat okay so lpa can be used first line lpa can be used for both isoniazid and rifampicin we mainly do it for isoniazid so now what we are doing is all rifampicin sensitive cases we are putting first line lpa to look for inh resistance what has happened is over last uh, few years inh resistance is increasing up to 11% of freshly diagnosed tb and up to 30% of previously treated uh, tuberculosis patients are showing rifampicin resistance so we are saying okay you are rifampicin sensitive no problem we'll put in a first line lpa and look for inh resistance and second line lpa is done for chloro chloroquinolones this is used for uh, in second line in treatment uh, that is second line att that is drug resistant tb and second line injectables what are these amikacin kanamycin and capreomycin so this is mcq for you second line lpa is done for chloro chloroquinolones and slis slis are amikacin oblique kanamycin or capreomycin any one of them we use in our uh, drug resistant tb regimes so that is uh, second line lpa and the third test we have available for us is uh, uh, mjet so under uh, rntcp we are doing mjet and uh, mjet results are available in 2 to 8 weeks so by Uh, around 2 to 3 weeks we are able to know that it is coming positive and then we can uh, test for drug susceptibility again uh, first line uh, rifampicin isoniazid and pyrazinamide second line uh, we test for levofloxacin moxifloxacin kanamycin capreomycin amikacin and other drugs like we can put sensitivity for other drugs also like linozolid because once you have a drug resistant tb we want to check up on all drugs as to which drugs are sensitive and we make our regime according to the sensitivity pattern of the bacilli for that particular patient so this is used uh, mjet is put on all drug resistant tb to look for uh, sensitivity pattern and those drugs are started accordingly so that's a different pro uh, program and a different plan i'll not discuss it here just uh, two three slides on lymph node tuberculosis i am going to overshoot time but uh, tb normally it's a 6 hours uh, topic i have to condense it into an hour uh, lymph node tuberculosis i already told you matting is present and it is a pretty common form of uh, tb in children 
and the most common site is cervical lymph nodes 5 to 9 years yes you can have scrofuloderma that is leakage from there or the overlying skin is infected and uh, the detection is done by aft afb staining from the pus or uh, fnac can be done which in which you can put in uh, you can do afb staining or even cbnat can be done from the material withdrawn by fnac other than that fnac will show you a caseating granuloma sometimes what happens is you hit the wrong region fnac is not very diagnostic we don't know what is it is what it is then we ask for lymph node biopsy also and we treat accordingly pleural tuberculosis or pulmonary tuberculosis again uh, a, it's a topic in itself important thing is the patient who comes to us has a long history is non sick there is a lot of pleural fluid collected on the x ray the tst may the tuberculosis skin test may be positive may be negative what we mainly do is we get a cbnat from sputum and gastric aspirate and uh, look for the presence of bacilli the pleural fluid is usually react uh, reactionary fluid and therefore cbnat positivity is very low does not contain bacilli so we don't do cbnat on pleural fluid we do it mainly from sputum and gastric aspirate pleural biopsy difficult to do usually not done so therefore tissue histopathology is also difficult to do and uh, we look at the pleural fluid and if the pleural fluid is mainly lymphocytic with exudative features that is protein more than 3 g per deciliter and uh, with the clinical picture it suggests uh, tuber pleural tuberculosis that is pleural effusion tubercular pleural effusion we start off ATT EBM you can call that intracranial tuberculosis also uh, herein we have a long standing history fever headache vomiting seizures lethargy irritability altered sensorium coma cranial nerve palsies deviation of angle of mouth and all those things you will get hemiparesis poor feeding weight loss so all the history is there uh, when you come to the wards you will be able to see patients of tbm and uh, you will see in medicine also in pediatrics also and therein you can have a full discussion on tbm how to approach the patient csf findings yes you should know you should know first of all what is normal csf uh, normal csf cell count and in tb uh, the csf cell count is uh, usually get uh, cells between 10 to 500 cells mainly lymphocytes a very early sample may give you some amount of neutrophils also csf protein is usually elevated normal protein is uh, 15 to 45 in tbm we get 100 to milligram per dl to even 3 gram per deciliter and glucose is usually less than 50 normal it is two third of the blood sugar you should know the normal value you should know the values in tbm values in bacterial meningitis so these three values you should know you can get mcqs on this then CT findings suggestive of tubercular meningitis, basal meningeal enhancement, hydrocephalus, tuberculomas, infarcts in this different areas, especially the basal ganglia. So the basal region is more affected in TBM. So these are some findings by which we diagnose. We do a LP, send the CSF for uh, CBNAT and uh, gastric aspirates again for CBNAT. If we have any other lymph node or anything else for CBNAT again, and if we get a positive result. We are very happy because we are able to get reforms in resistance and we even put in cultures. So this is the way we approach a case of TBM. More discussion will be held bedside when you get a case of TBM. So now let's come to treatment. So the uh, what is the goal of treatment? To decrease morbidity and case fatality rate by ensuring relapse-free cure, number one. So we want that the patient should uh, survive, number, number one, and should have minimum morbidity and long-standing complications and to minimize and prevent development of drug resistance. So this is important because if we give treatment in inadequate doses, drug resistance will appear, this will be a problem. And another thing is to render patient non-infectious so that he does not spread infection to uh, uh, his contacts, break the chain of transmission and to decrease the pool of infection. Now, uh, this is a classification according to the history of TB treatment. So uh, new cases, TB patient never been treated or to KTT less than one. This is important when you classify the patient for treatment. Recur uh, previously treated, received ATT for more than one month, recurrent TB, previously diagnosed TB, took treatment, declared successful, now again having microbiologically confirmed TB. Treatment after failure, patient who has been treated for TB, whose treatment failed at the end of their most recent course of treatment, he will go into uh, drug resistance management. Treatment after loss to follow up. So, patient who has taken ATT for more than a month did not turn up for treatment and now is again having microbiologically confirmed TB. Again, this patient will work up for drug resistance. 
other previously treated patients, previously treated patients whose outcome after their most recent course of treatment was not known. So why is it important? Because our treatment will be depending upon all this classification. So drug regimen is earlier, uh, if you read your older books, if your book editions are more than two years old, you'll find treatment mentioned as alternate day regime. We are no more giving alternate day regime since last year we have shifted to daily uh, administered daily fixed dose combinations. So important for you again, we are giving daily FDCs, fixed dose combination of first line anti tubercular drugs and appropriate weight bands. So we use weight bands because see, ATT is given by uh, workers who are uh, health workers, not doctors. So they cannot calculate by weight. So we give them weight bands. Okay, 15 to 24 kg, 24 to 35 kg. So we give them packets and those packets they use. So drug sensitive TB, uh, which will include new microbiologically confirmed pulmonary TB, new clinically diagnosed pulmonary TB. I talked about clinically diagnosed TB when we are not very sure, when we uh, did not get uh, CBNET positive, but highly sensitive of tuberculosis, like he has miliary pattern or maybe has pleural effusion and is non-sick. So these are clinically diagnosed, but CBNET was not positive. New clinically diagnosed Rifamsin sensitive extra pulmonary TB, like from lymph node, we took a aspiration and uh, it was uh, uh, sent for CBNAT. CBNAT came positive and Rifamsin sensitive. And drug sensitive previously treated TB, now having recurrence treatment after loss to follow up or after failure. And these shall be treated for, these shall be evaluated for drug resistant TB. So the last category will evaluate for drug resistant TB. And the remaining above three, we will con we will start drug sensitive TB treatment. So it consists of two parts: intensive phase for two months, HRZD, that is INH, rifamsin, pyrazinamide, and enthambitol. This will we will give daily, and then continuation phase four months, we will give HRE, that is INH, rifamsin, and enthambitol. So another change for you: enthambitol earlier we were giving for two months. In your books, uh, if the additions are old. It will be written rifamsin for two months only. Now we are giving, sorry, ethamitol for two months only. Now we are giving ethamitol for 